Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am an AI application team manager from Andes Tech. Uh, today, I would like to share our experience on running large language models on Redify Development Board, and also uh, describe the opportunities and challenges when optimizing LLM inference by using the Redify P extension. Uh, this is my outline. This time we will focus on the RISC-5P extension only. And some may think that RISC-5P extension is not sufficient to run LLM applications. However, we will show that uh, with moderate uh, optimizations and selecting appropriate model sizes, uh, LLM models still can run smoothly. With the emergence of large language models, there are already some specialized LLM inference frameworks available in the open source community. Large language models introduce uh, some features that do not exist in traditional models. Uh, one is new operations uh, such as KB cache management. The other one uh, is new quantization format, for example, a four-bit uh, dynamic bar-based conversation is commonly used. However, mm, generic runtime frameworks uh, for embedded systems, uh, such as TensorFlow Lite or ExecuTorch, provide none or still limited support for large language models. So, uh, given the current situation, I think uh, using a specialized LLM framework is a more practical and more efficient choice. <coughs> so let's move to, move to uh, Lama CPP. Uh, Lama CPP uh, is currently a very actively contributed project, and it is, of course, it is uh, LLM specific. It's written in plain C or C++ languages, which means uh, we can run Llama CPP without any Python code. Also, uh, we are able to run Llama CPP in a resource-limited environment. The key advantage for the RISC-V community is that Llama CPP supports a build system for RISC-V architecture and also includes optimized code uh, written in RVB intrinsic. Lama CPP uh, supports uh, two bit to eight bit uh, integer quantization formats. It also includes very popular four bit quantization. Now let's introduce uh, the RISC-V development board we are using. Uh, the photo on the right side, uh, sorry. The photo on the right side shows the Andes Voyager development board which is equipped with a Qilai test chip. This chip includes four core X45 MP that support RVP draft standard, as well as uh, an X27V core that supports RVV. It is important to know that uh, currently X45 MP is the previous generation application processor from Andes technology. It has been licensed many times and this board uh, is mainly used for IP evaluation and internal application development. This board is not for sale as a commercial product. Now let me briefly introduce uh, the P extension. P extension um, sits between RISC V baseline and RISC V uh, V extension. Instead of uh, rely on dedicated registers like V extension, P extension reuses the RISC-V general purpose registers, thus making it more compact uh, and to be low cost. RVP provides a rich set of instructions uh, originally tailored for signal processing, but in terms of LM inference, uh, RVP is still useful because it provides uh, efficient instructions to compute matrix multiplication as well as the uh, four-bit quantization. Uh, 
Now let's briefly talk about uh, how Lama CPP handles uh, its computation. We know that uh, the largest part of LLM computation is GEMM and GMB. Actually, uh, Lama CPP already uh, implicitly implemented the microkernel concept. So um, by default, Lama CPP decomposes each GMM and GMV computation uh, into a number of uh, much smaller vector dot product components, which is then uh, computed by the microkernels. Lama CPP defines uh, various types of microkernels. For example, each quantization format, format defined in Lama CPP has a corresponding microkernel to compute uh, its vector dot product. The advantage of uh, microkernel design is that um, Lama CPP already handles uh, the tiling task. So we don't have to worry about how tiling works. Uh, we can concentrate on how to write our own microkernel uh, more efficiently. But for, uh, for uh, LAM inference, RVP has both advantage and challenges. We know that uh, RVP is a low-cost SIMD solution. It provides a vector dot product friendly instructions. But uh, RVP SIMD width is only up to 64 bits, which is half of NEON and smaller than any RVP configuration, which also means uh, less, less data prairies than can be used by the P extension. Moreover, uh, RVP has only integer data types, which is good for quantized models. But in Lama CPP, even for quantized models, uh, the dynamic quantization part also needs floating point computation. So right now, we could only use uh, risk by scalar instructions to compute this part. So due to uh, these challenges, uh, we limit the model parameters to one billion in order to achieve a, an acceptable token generation speed. So this slide shows the inference speed uh, before the optimization. The target model is a tiny llama one billion parameters. And we ask the model uh, how to build a website in 10 steps. Uh, this is the answer. It goes very slow. Yeah, the output speed uh, is only around one token per second uh, using the scale, scalar instructions. Now, now let's discuss some approaches uh, to accelerate the Lama CPP inference speed. The most uh, straightforward way is to use SIMD instructions to implement vector dot product. For example, uh, in RVP, the SMAQA instruction can compute uh, vector dot product quite effective, uh, effectively. There are also some methods uh, that can improve the, improve, uh, the inference speed. If um, eight bit quantization is too slow or the model size is too large, uh, we could use the four bit quantization also know that uh, Lama CPP uh, allows us to use different uh, quantization formats for different layers for a single model. Also, um, Lama CPP provides uh, some KB cache options. Uh, it might also improve the performance as well. The last two options are more aggressive. Uh, we can directly implement GEMM or GEMV using SIMD instructions and bypass uh, the vector the product part I mentioned earlier. We can also develop a custom block format to reorder the weight, making the block format more cache friendly and more efficient for SIMD instructions. And no matter uh, which method we use, it is important uh, to keep perplexity as low as possible. Yeah, lower perplexity means better quality uh, in generated text. Lama CPP uh, provides a perplexity measurement program by default. 
from our experience, a slight uh, perplexity rise is not noticeable. But uh, if the perplexity goes too high, uh, it probably means uh, there is something wrong in our computation. Uh, now this is the, our main result. Yeah. For both uh, A-bit and 4-bit quantization, uh, we achieved a token generation speed of uh, more than four tokens per second. The speed up uh, is about four to five times faster. Uh, as you can see, 4-bit uh, uh, quantization is faster uh, because it requires only half of the original weight size, uh, which reduces the low size and also consumes uh, less memory bandwidth, so it's faster. So now it's finished. This slide shows uh, the latency of each operation collected from Lama CPP. Uh, we can see uh, that even after optimization, matrix multiplication is still the most time consuming part. So matrix multiplication is a topic uh, worth to explore further. And the bottom right side shows the perplexity result. The perplexity of our optimization is very similar to uh, x86 reference code. However, there's uh, one thing to note. Uh, here is a clear gap uh, between 8-bit and 4-bit quantization, which means uh, the quality of text generated by 8-bit quantization is still better. But the price is a uh, weight size is doubled, uh, which also means uh, the model size is also uh, roughly doubled. So um, here's our conclusions. First, uh, we used a real chip uh, development board uh, featuring four RVP cores. When the target model uh, was tiny llama one billion, uh, we achieved a token generation speed of uh, over uh, four tokens per second. And we also test the Llama 2, a seven billion model. Because the model is much larger, token generation speed uh, drops to around one token per second. The results uh, demonstrate that uh, four RVP cores are already capable of uh, running 1 billion scaled models. However, uh, to run models with 7 billion parameters or more, uh, we need more advanced platforms. For example, a multi-core RVV system with larger VLAN size would be required. OK. Since RVV uh, optimization is, is still a work in progress, uh, we do not have RVV performance data this time. Here we collected some real cheap RVV performance data from public sources. Uh, as we can see, uh, running larger models using multi-core RVV is certainly possible. Uh, but I believe it is still important uh, to use software uh, optimization techniques to reduce the overall hardware cost as much as possible. So um, that's all I have to share today. Yeah, thank you. We have some time for some questions if you're willing to entertain them. Hi, um, two questions. Uh, first, which version of RVP is this since there, it's going through a, a revision right now? Uh, we use an RVP draft, draft standard, not, not uh, okay. uh, a draft standard. So that's from a couple of years ago or so? Um, it's, a, it's an earlier yeah. version, yeah. Okay, and the other question is, um, 
if would you be able to take advantage of of SIMD floating point in in any of these, or have you looked at that at all? Uh, sorry, floating point. Yeah, you said that. Well, you you own the RVP only has integer data types. Yes. Um, would you be able to take advantage of floating point data types in these algorithms or maybe some others? Mm, what, what I mean is, um, actually, I, we, we, we also wish an RVP can support uh, floating data types. Yes. Uh, so am I answering your question or not? RVP does not RVP does not have floating point data yes. types in it. So, if it did, would you be able to take advantage of it in like Tiny Llama or or any of these other? Yes, like uh, like I just said, um, uh, Llama CPU still needs some uh, floating point computation yeah, for the dynamic quantization part. Right. So, so 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 right now, I guess you have to move it over to the to the floating point unit and do, do it. Yes, the scalar for okay. floating point unit. Scalar. Yeah, we, okay. that's all I, we can use uh, right now. One more question? No more questions for Mr. Frank? Okay, Frank, okay. thank you very much. Give him a hand. Thank up. you.